Welcome back to Personal Best right here at 1220 WKRS. We have Richard Fowler here today, and we're talking about image consultation. Um, Richard, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. We're like analyzing all our dress now. <laughs> and, you know, tell us a little bit about your company um, and what you do, because you're an image. Like if somebody were to come see you, like where do you even start with them? Well, um, our company is Far Constructs, um, and you can definitely check us out on the web at www.richardafowler.com. I'm actually, um, on, and I will answer the question in a second, but on the sidebar, we're actually running a segment on our website about the 31 things that every politico should have in their closet. So it's definitely geared towards the men on what every politico man, I think a man in general, should have in their closet. So um, check that out. And I think when a client comes to me or somebody who's interested in image consulting, I sort of try to get a feel of you know, what they're running for, what they're doing, and, you know, what their audience is. Um, and I think those are the two big things, is to figure out who your audience is and why you're doing it. And after you figure out those two things, then you can work on, you know, how we re-image you or how we make you the image that you want to portray to the audience. Now, do you, while, after you do it, like, what kind of um, testing, do you, is there a way to test to see if what you're doing is working as far as, it, or is it just kind of like, you feel it, you know what I mean? Is there any kind of guide to gauge if it's working? Um, I think it's, you know, it's very hard to know if there's a guide to gauge is working. I don't think there's any particular poll that, because I think a lot of image and a lot of what people sort of take in from you is a lot like, you know, it's subconscious, so it's hard to gauge. I mean, one gauge that we, that we do use is, you know, likability. Do you find this person likable? Likability polling is one way. Um, we don't do too much of that. I mean, our goal is really just to make sure the client's comfortable. And if the client's comfortable in their own image, um, then, you know, we work off of that. And also, you know, taking into consideration some of their demographic um, and, you know, putting those two things together allows us to sort of get a, gra- a picture of what a candidate would look like in that particular area or a particular, you know, elected official or appointed person would look in that particular space. And then how we make it work. Um, you know, for them, and if they're comfortable, and you know, we ask them questions: of How do you think the audience received you, um, et cetera? Okay, and this is before we went to break. I gave um, my little uh, statistic. I didn't give the statistic, but I said blank percentage of verbal communication is body language and image, and the the percentage is fifty five percent is body language and image. So that's without you saying anything, right? Right, that's just body language and image, and I mean, I think what you say only makes up, and I can't, and I don't have the statistics right in front of me, but I think what you say only really makes up about seven to eight percent because your delivery makes up a good chunk of you know what it is that you're saying. So that you know, you'd be surprised how far, how little people listen to you. And on top of that, remember, I mean, we know that the hu- we know that the human you know attention span is only about eight minutes. So in that eight minutes, if you haven't come across what's important to, you know, your audience, you could in all good chance you could, have lost, you could have lost them. And, you know, it just sort of crushes your ability to, you know, regain them back after that. Now, do you ever find, see, this is the one thing about, you might not want to answer this question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. But with politics, is there times where, um, Sometimes I think, you know, people feel like, okay, I don't really know this candidate. And like you said, they just decide if they like them by the feeling they get. And the feeling obviously could be by how they're dressed or how they speak. Um, do you, do you, have you found that there's, um, with most people that you're working with, not necessarily just in politics, but, but in business too, do you find that their message gets a more across more clearly? Or do you find that you're just really more working on their likability just right off the bat? Well, I think those two go hand in hand. I don't think it's one or the other. I think messaging and likability sort of works together. I think people find you likable, and then because they find you likable, they, you know, they, they buy into your message, or sometimes it's because people like your message, and because of your message, they find you likable. Um, I think what we saw with President Obama is that he had the ability to communicate a message of, you know, this is not about me, this is about all of us. So because he looked like, quote-unquote, all of us, he was able to easily, he could have portrayed his message a lot easier. But like I would like to say, you know, the phone lines are clear, that ear wax without the ear. People would listen to the message because they felt that he was like them. Um, and I think the problem that some 
the problem that some, you know, folk politicians have is that they don't really feel, people don't feel as though they, are, they identify with the person. A great, good example is a lot of people, um, no matter what political party you is, there's a lot of people that didn't like George, they didn't like George Washington's policies. One thing that anybody can say to you is that they would love to have a beer with him because he was just a very likable guy. He portrayed a very, you know, Southern, I drink, I drink a beer type of image, and that works. And even if you didn't like his policy, you did, you, even if you did or did not like his policy, you liked him as a person. And, and you know, and that is kind of one thing that's important is, like, when you talk about um, likability, talk about body language, because what what do you what kind of things do you look for in order to improve people when when you're talking about body language and image well i think you know it all depends on where your audience are one thing that's very important um that i tell folks especially when doing interviews television and interviews all of that posture is so important posture is the most important thing ever and because a lot of times on television everything is magnified or not magnified so if you don't have good posture it shows that you have horrible posture. And if you have good, decent posture, it shows that your posture is not so good. So you have to have amazing posture on TV so you can have good posture, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, um, that would I be terrible also, for me. <laughs> I have really bad posture. <laughs> and, you know, truth of the matter is I have bad. I don't have the best posture. So, I mean, everybody has their flaws. I have horrible posture. And, if you know, when I do, when I am doing a television interview, my posture is magnified. It looks insane, like, if you were to like look at me while I'm doing the television interview, it looks insane, but on the camera, it comes across as just being very normal. Interesting. Um, like you're sitting and having a conversation with me. Um, so posture, I think, is very important. I think, you know, what your face is saying is very important. Um, also, on top of that, I think it's very uh, not only what your face is saying, but also what your hands are saying, where your hand movements go. Like, you know, are you moving your hands? Are you just grabbing onto the podium? All of those things, I think, play intricate parts of understanding who you are as a person. And because the human eye is trained to just pick up all the details, as, you know, as the audience, you pick up little snippets about that person without realizing you're picking up snippets about them. I think that's definitely true. Because um, sometimes I think people, they seem, even though they might not be nervous, if they do too many hand gestures they seem nervous. Exactly. Um, not only do they seem nervous, I think sometimes if you do too many hand gestures, people see you as being over-anxious or uneasy, and you have too much going on type of thing. So it's very important that you work on sort of, you know, doing the right hand gestures at the right time, but also you don't want to seem too stiff. So you definitely want to be yourself. And it's very hard to sort of work all those things in, but with practice and, you know, with deliberate understanding of what you're portraying, you can make it work for you. And I think that's like, that's one of the most important things is to do what you can to make you work for your audience. And that's the, the key. So the key to that is, you know what your brand is, but you need to make sure that everybody else around you knows what your brand is. And if you're not portraying, if you're not projecting the brand you think you are, then it's time to reassess yourself and, you know, find that median where you're like, okay, this is the brand that I want to project. And this is what I'm projecting. So let's get let's make some changes so I can project the brand that I want to project. When you've worked with people, is there ever somebody that just cannot cannot understand why they're not projecting their image? I mean, do you give them notes? Like, do you actually watch their speeches and things? Oh yeah, um, I do. I end up watching a lot of hearings and news clips. I've and I'm, they, the most of the clients that I have, they'll tell you that I'm mean. <laughs> they'll tell you that I'm he's. Very, very. St- he's a stickler. And the reason why I'm a stickler is because it's very important that we get, you know, we, you know, we hone their image in correctly. Case in point, um, I had a client who was doing a hearing, and I guess he had a pen. He had a pen in his hand, and the pen just kept moving, and I don't think he noticed it. And I'm like, you had this pen moving. And he's like, I didn't even know I had a pen in my hand because they're in the middle. They're in their testimony, and they don't realize that there's a pen, and the pen is just moving across the screen, and the pen is distracting what they're what they're saying. Right. Right. And it's funny because a lot and of I times think, people don't think it's a big deal, but it is a big deal to the person who's watching it. Exactly. Um, it's very, it's a very big deal to the person, to the person that's watching it. Even if the person's not really even noticing it, they're subconsciously picking it up. And so they're either they're focusing on the pen or they're subconsciously, you know, focusing on something else. A good a case in point is for women who are doing stuff and they fly away. A hair is flying away. People spend more time focusing on a flyaway than listening to the actual person speaking. 
So <laughs> stuff like that is just very important that, you know, something that you watch for. Right, and right. And make sure that you, you control it. And I think that's for everything. I think that goes for, you know, like folks in Washington, political folks in Washington, but also goes for, you know, somebody in the in the Lake County area, PTA mom is giving a presentation. The same thing. The same images are brought across. And if you want to be a confident PTA mom or you want to be a confident soccer mom, you got to portray those images that so I'm confident, but I'm just a normal. I'm normal on every day, but I'm still confident in being me. And I understand what I'm, I understand what image I'm giving off. I like that. Well, we have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I've got some more questions for Richard Fowler. He's been kind enough to talk to us about our image consultation, and Scott definitely got the credentials. He's uh, got amazing history. So stick around right here at 1220 WKRS. We'll be Welcome back to Personal Best right here at 1220 WKRS. I'm Kristen Zeus, and talking about image consulting today, and we're very fortunate to have Richard Fowler here talking to us about how to get our image straight. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Richard. Thanks for having me. Okay. You know, I was laughing because, you know, you have, you yourself have been on different shows and such talking about image consulting. Do you, now when you get your tape back, like I said, you had one newsreel, do you, um, do you critique yourself or do you make someone from your company? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I think I'm my harshest critic. I spend a lot of time critiquing myself. I watch my videos over and over again. And then I have, I have, you know, I send it out to some of my folks, some folks that are involved in my company, as well as some folks that are very, you know, near and dear to me. Um, and they review them as well. And they come back with their criticisms. And everything is, every day is a work in progress. Uh, that's even for me. Um, I take it very personally and very seriously. And, you know, making sure that I present the right, the best image that I can um, when representing folks. Because at the end of the day, I mean, part part of my job is to represent Democrats and to represent those who don't have the ability to speak up for themselves. So then do you, like, for instance, when you're working in politics and things, do you, um, when you guys use test audiences, um, do you then just have them fill out a questionnaire and then you kind of tally it up and try to figure out how how to change that image if, if it's not the one that the person's trying to portray? Right, I think it's questionnaire and just listening to what they thought that person portrayed. Like, if you watch tape, what do you think about this person? What do you think about, you know, is on, on top of filling out, like, you know, the common cards also just sort of getting first reactions. What are your first reactions after looking at this tape? Well, if I think this person is X, I think this person is Y, I think this person is Z. Those are very, very important when it comes to changing how we present them to, you know, the other to their audience. Have you ever had somebody who just says, no, I'm not going to change that? <laughs> like something that you think is like a main um, stumbling block? I think that happens all the time. I think you're going to find candidates that are very, and, and like clients that are going to be very, just, I don't even, I, I don't need to change this. But a lot of times, those are not the clients that I end up getting. Most of the folks that I end up getting, folks like, I need to change my image to run for office, or I need to adjust my image to run for office. So they're very receptive you know, to, you know, the information that I provide and the information that we provide for our constructs. Now, when you talk about image and things, we were talking about clothes before. How important, I mean, obviously the entire looks, like with hair, do people sometimes just get like a completely different hairstyle after they work with you? (laughs) Not not (laughs) at all. I think I don't, I never want, like I said, for me, it's not about taking people out of their comfort zone. The thing is to keep them in their comfort zone and, you know, make... Put, like you know, make tweaks to their comfort zone so that they're still comfortable, while also you know they're projecting the image that they want other people to see. Okay, this is not to pick on Donald Trump either. So if anybody's a Donald Trump fan, don't say anything. A lot of people talk about his hair. I mean, I'm not the first one. Do you think he now keeps it that way just <laughs> just because he's known for it? Well, yeah, I think you know, I think the Donald Trump hair is part of the Donald Trump brand. Um, Case in point being, I'm pretty sure the Donald Trump wig sells a lot during Halloween, just like the Schnucky wig does, because those are part of their brand. And if part if your hair is part of your brand, then, you know, it's part of your brand. Well, and it's funny, Um, I think there's a part of him, I mean, I'm totally, like, speaking for him, but he's kind of like, that's me. And I mean, I think there's kind of a funny part that people are like, he's not going to change his hair. It's almost like a strength. And I think it it is a strength for Donald Trump. I think it's a strength for like hair is a strength for a lot of folks. Their hair sort of says, "This is me. My hair is authentically what makes me authentically me." And if you don't like my hair, then you know 
just deal with it. <laughs> right. um, and I think, and I, per, to be perfectly honest, I think that's okay. I think that is perfectly okay. If you have something that you think is authentically me, um, that's distinct from the pack, then it's okay to have to for that to be part of you know your package. 